The word of God is serious. Can you say amen? You don't play with it. You don't mock it. You don't reject it. You don't manipulate it. You obey it. Welcome to the program, Warning. This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen, President of World Ministries International, and once again, welcome. This week, I'm talking once again with Attorney Stephen Pigeon. Attorney Pigeon has fought in the Supreme Court. He speaks at times at tea parties. He has spoke with conferences, uh, traveling with me. In fact, we've, we've covered different nations of the world together as well as uh, into the Knesset in Israel. Uh, also, he'll be going with me to Kenya uh, to meet with uh, government officials there. But right now, I'm concerned heavily with the United States of America and our future. What kind of future will we have? A lot depends on the church. If the church will rise up and truly represent Jesus Christ. I just want to look at some headline news. It says, be prepared an economic tsunami alert for Americans. That's headline news, June 2011, whistleblower. Inside, page 16, it says, the war for food and water, fiber and fuel. The war for food, water, fiber, fuel. Another one, rise of the lawless left, May 2011, headline news says millions thick acorn stole the 2008 election for Obama. Again, the lawless left. Are we in a time of lawlessness? Well, I certainly believe we are. When the President of the United States no longer has to prove that he is a natural-born citizen, when we don't seem to care any longer, over the rule of law, what the Constitution says, we ignore the truth, I think we're in lawlessness. I wrote an article, it'll come out August 2011, you may receive a copy if you want to telephone 360-6295-248, we'll send it to you free. What the Founding Fathers Thought of Islam and Homosexuality, I'm certainly not going to read it, but I do want to read a couple points out of it. Throughout history until this current politically correct era, leaders throughout America and around the world have called the Islamic prophet Muhammad a madman who spread deception, destruction, and death with a 7th century revelation from a fraudulent spirit. Thomas Jefferson authored a bill penalizing sodomy by castration. As followers of Jesus Christ, we love the homosexual person the same as we love the person guilty of lying, of adultery or murder, but we must not forget the actions mentioned are sins. Homosexuality is a sin. Prior to 1973, it was a crime in America and has been throughout the other nations of the earth. The religions of the world, including Islam, look at homosexuality as a sin. In Islam, the penalty for homosexuality is death. Today, the nations Around the world, the United States, along with the United Nations, is trying to influence the nations of the world. So we have the United States, we have the United Nations trying to influence the nations around the world to accept homosexuality as an alternate lifestyle. So the United States uh, and the United Nations are putting pressure on all nations that change their constitution to accept homosexuality when the nations of the world, around the world have consistently been against homosexuality, against abortion. They are putting pressure on nations to change their constitutions or forfeit receiving financial aid or other benefits. We as Christians are in a spiritual and cultural battle where we must label behaviors such as homosexuality as sin and quit compromising because of our fear of criticism or being threatened. We must not sit back as Christians did in Germany and allow evil people and leaders to destroy America making laws to arrest Christians, ushering this nation into the new world order, eventually led by the Antichrist. Instead, we must take back America's morality through evangelism, utilizing fearless preaching and teaching of the truth, such as was heard and preached by godly men like Charles Finney, John Wesley, Billy Sunday, and others. 
Another article that will appear September 2011. What's next? Many people would agree that we are all living in the generation that will see the return of Jesus Christ described in Zechariah 14, 14. Prior to that great event, we will see the following events unfold, but not necessarily in this order. World War III, International Peace Plan for the Middle East, the Temple Rebuilt, the Abomination of Desolation, the Great Tribulation with the Mark of the Beast, the Battle of Armageddon with the return of Jesus Christ, followed by the Millennium. Yes, dear saints, we are in exciting times, yes, and yet trying, distressful, and troubling times. We will see the greatest revival in all of history with signs and wonders and miracles, as in the New Testament. However, we will also see persecution, suffering, and death. Remember that Christians do not have to live in fear because nothing can touch us unless God allows it. There is no such thing as death as we have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord who fulfilled the feast of first fruits. Please meditate on Psalm 91 for comfort and strength during these times. Now, I prophesied the events of 9-11 and the New Orleans Katrina flood warning that God would destroy New Orleans again if it is rebuilt. There will be an escalation in fulfilling the warnings during 1998 through 2008, leading to their total and complete fulfillment. Stock market collapse, social security collapse, natural disaster, civil unrest, volcanic activity and earthquakes across the United States of America, nuclear, chemical, biological terrorism and or attack, etc. According to the economic experts, the stock market and economy have already crashed between 98 and 2008, but they have been propped up again. The new world order is determined to cause them to have an irreparable collapse, pushing us into the new world economic order slavery system, which will eventually include the mark of the beast. There will be a new world order politically, a new world order economically, and a new world religious order. So you're going to see a new world order politically a new world economic order, and a new world religious order. That's where we're going in the United States of America today. And we're going to be discussing that right now with Attorney Stephen Pigeon. Attorney Pigeon, welcome to the program, Warning. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. It's a pleasure to be here. Economic collapse. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the economy today because I don't think most people seem to really realize, I, I think we get a sense in America that uh, everything will somehow be okay. There's some magic wand that somehow through our political uh, genius in Congress, everything will be fixed and it's all politics, all this arguing. One side lies, the other side lies, depending who's in power, and they don't realize that there's people guilty on both sides of the aisle, deliberately, systematically, trying to destroy the sovereignty of the United States as well as the rest of the world to move us into this new world tyranny, uh, eventually the mark of the beast. Steve? Well, that's correct. And in fact, it's very easily documented. You can make the determination as to the loyalty of Congress. Many of the members of Congress pledge their loyalty to an international order. And you can see their votes reflected. How many times they have talked about putting our troops under the banner of the UN how many times they have acquiesced the authority of the United States to the authority of the United Nations. Under the law of nations, we're a sovereign nation. And as a sovereign nation, there is no authority superior to that nation as political authority on earth, save the, the authority of the creator. And so to acquiesce to some other authority is to acquiesce to it as a political entity. For us to say we can't act until we have the UN approval is to forego our sovereignty. And any congressman that says we should uh, do that has betrayed the constitutional fabric. They've betrayed their oath of office. And th yes, this has been an ongoing problem. And most of the country sold out in the early 1990s when we adapted first NAFTA and then GATT, the General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs, which then evolved into the World Trade Organization. And under those two doctrines, NAFTA and GATT, we have shipped out all of our economy. And, and, and for what reason, I mean, the question is begged here, for what reason did we give all of our industry to China? Exactly. And because we have done that, now we have set ourselves up now to be completely overthrown, and we have in fact been overthrown. 
the election of Barack Hussein Obama, a person who has yet to uh, establish that he's an American citizen, a person who's yet to establish that he's, in fact, Barack Hussein Obama. We have no documentation from him in any respect. But what we do have from him is we have the fruit of his power. We can see, we can judge him by his fruits. And what he has done is he has spent more money than any single leader on the face of the earth ever in the history of mankind. He has rung up a debt, and now there, it's a very interesting thing. A lot of times you'll hear people talk about the debt clock. The key, the, the, mo the most interesting factor about the debt clock, well, there's three interesting factors about the debt clock. Number one, the debt that they claim exists is not the real debt. Right. Right. That's the book debt that they tell the American public we owe. They don't talk about the, the unaccounted for liabilities like federal retirement, Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, and so on, the unfunded liabilities. That, by the way, are, some people estimate, well over $100 trillion. My, my. So just the on-the-book debt under Barack Obama has, for the first time since World War II, exceeded the GDP, the gross domestic product. And once the debt exceeds the gross domestic product, you have arrived at insolvency, which is where we are now. We're insolvent. So you hear all this rhetoric on TV, well, so-and-so is going to vote for the debt ceiling to, to go through the debt ceiling or whatever. All that's a lot of nonsense, it's a lot of rhetoric, until you consider the fact that the vote to increase the debt ceiling is a vote to put us into insolvency. No one has thought about maybe cutting something from the budget, particularly Mr. Obama, who has printed money. There's no restriction on his printing of money, not even ink and paper. They'll just create it in a digital file. And they've done all of the above. So what we have going on here is economic jihad against the nation. Successful jihad, I might add. So the economy has to crash for them to move us into this, this new world order. Yeah, and their image of the new world order is despicable, for lack of a better word. They expect us to be mindless uh, automatons living in uh, ant farm establishments over some train track somewhere, going to work and performing our daily labor without question while they tax 85% of it to put in their own pockets. They will have no reserves for us whatsoever. As far as they're concerned, we can live on a bowl of rice a day, and they will take the resources that remain, and they will eat luxuriously, and they will fly around in private aircraft and enjoy themselves on private yachts, while we, the lumpen proletariat, will exist as the cattle that we are in their minds. October 2008, uh, when, when they said that without this bailout, uh, the economy would crash. Mm -hmm. And so we went ahead and we bailed out, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we've, we propped up other economies, uh, and the euro right now is still crashing again. Talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, John, we used to have a joke up in Alaska. Two guys confronted by a bear, and they're saying, can we outrun the bear? And one looks at the other and says, I don't have to outrun the bear. I only need to outrun you. And this is exactly what we have going on economically. We don't have to uh, actually perform economically. We just have to perform better than Europe. We have to perform better than China. We have to perform better than the uh, OPEC uh, producing, the oil producing nations. So we think. But this has been the game that has been cascading down. Now we're at the precipice of worldwide economic collapse. Exactly. Now the fraud began, I mean, there's been a lot of fraud that's gone on. But the fact is that the Federal Reserve, uh, the federal government switched over to Federal Reserve notes, which are promissory notes. Now, I don't know, but John, but between me and you, if I took a chit, a promissory note, at some point I'm going to want to get paid right. on the note. And yet the Federal Reserve has published you know, trillions and trillions of promissory notes with no intention of ever paying anybody a dime in real money. And uh, so here we go. So we have this massive money supply. We have this massive debt. And, and there's nobody to pay the promissory note. So yes, the economy is now, the, the crash that took place in 2008 would have been a worldwide crash. Very similar to the market crash that happened in 1929 with, by the way, a very similar response from the Federal Reserve. Wow. And it, but, the, but the crash that, is hap that would have happened, had we allowed it to happen, we could have recovered only, only, if we had restored essential economic freedom to the United States. Now, this is a premise that I've taught about extensively. 
a person, one of the tea parties asked me, well, what is your economic theory? And I said, my economic theory is, hear the word of the Lord, O house of Israel, thou shalt not steal. There's an economic theory for you. Yes, yes, yes. And the thou shalt not steal applies to the state first, and then the people. And of course, the state now is stealing everything from us. The state takes our real property, the state takes our income, and devalues our income. You know, they don't have to tax us 85% of our income. They just give us money and then devalue it before we can spend it. How many people said, well, I'm going to put together a lifetime savings in 1980 of $100,000? $100,000 is, is not going to get you through a lifetime. Right. That's a certainty. Right. And, and, and why not? Because the federal government has devalued 98% of the real value of the currency since the Federal Reserve was formed. Yeah, they're talking about hyperflation kicking in. Well, the hyperinflation, I know there's a lot of people that are talking about hyperinflation. They think that's a theory. I know that there's a lot of theory about that, that hyperinflation will come with trillions of dollars floating back uh, into the United States. The problem is, is that you have what's going on is a worldwide collapse of fiat currency. Fiat currency only exists for as long as you trust the government behind the currency. Exactly. When you no longer trust the government behind the currency, the currency is what it is, paper, worthless paper. It's like the Confederate money. Confederate money was valuable in trading during the, the uh, supremacy of the Confederacy. When they got defeated, you might as well wallpaper your bathroom with it. We have the same condition with the, with the, with the American dollar now and the same condition with the euro. And interestingly enough, people who said, well, let's flee to the yuan, the Chinese uh, dollar, the Chinese dollar is also likely to, to fail and crumble. The Chinese are experiencing a housing bubble now like we had in 2008, only it's about twice as big. Yes, and yes. And it's going to fall twice as far. They've also had a greater level of fraud in their stock market. So if you have a collapse of the Chinese currency, the Chinese market, the Chinese real estate market, you have a collapse in Europe with the, the failure of Greece, you know that Portugal just was devalued, right? Yes. Their bonds were devalued. Spain is in a similar predicament, and when Spain goes, it will take all of Europe with it. They have a $400 billion euro deficit right now. Nobody can make that up. Germany can't make it up, and we're not going to print enough money here to make it up as well. We've already put a tremendous amount of money into European banks. $680 billion went into European banks before TARP was approved. Two days before TARP was approved, Ben Bernanke transferred $680 billion into European banks. When they said, we want to audit the Federal Reserve, he said, you don't want to audit us because if anybody found out what we were doing, it would crash the worldwide economy. Well, that's the understatement of the year. So what we have is we have a totally fraudulent economy, completely propped up. The house of cards is propped up to make it look like a real-time economy. Everyone knows it's going down. Now, there's other difficulties. Uh, farming, as you mentioned in, in your article. Agriculturally, uh, you know, the agriculture recovered in Russia and Ukraine. Yes. And Ukraine has traditionally been the breadbasket for all of Europe. But they're curtailing their exports this year, as they did last year, because Vladimir Putin has made the decision that he will be Joseph and he will store up the grain for Russia and its people and deprive Europe of what, whatever it is they're growing. So Europe then is facing whatever, com whatever comes may, drought, uh, you know, uh, failed crops, so on and so forth. They're going to have to live with that. China is competing with the United States to obtain agricultural ground in South America, Africa, and other places where they think they can find arable land. And so, yes, there is competition for food, there is competition for oil, there is competition for fiber, there is competition for fresh water. I want to get to the, uh, if we want to say, the lawless left, mm -hmm. although there's also, we could classify the lawless right, so to speak. Because we have, we have people guilty of treason on both sides of the aisle. But yes, there is a lawless left, so to, so to speak. But uh, again, what, what the people watching right now, and, and most of them are, are people that attend churches, who would call themselves Christian, what they must realize is that uh, there has been a deliberate uh, strategy, conspiracy plan to uh, wipe out our economy so we go bankrupt. And, and this has been going on now, as we've talked about for some time, transferring uh, the basis of our wealth overseas with our industry, with our, our technology. And uh, even that latest bailout in October of uh, 2008, 
uh, we sent uh, our money again to prop up uh, governments, uh, nations around the world. So we have transferred the wealth out because this needs to fall if they are going to take over the United States of America as far as its sovereignty, its republic, and move us into uh, the new world order. Steve? Well, we're, we're very well down the path, John, very well down the path. For instance, Barack Obama claimed he had he, shovel-ready jobs. Well, he could have had shovel-ready jobs. He could have had shovel-ready jobs repairing the levees in North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, uh, Louisiana, and Arkansas, Mississippi, all these places where the levees have failed and are now being dynamited to flood farmland, those could have been repaired. There was infrastructure that could have been repaired. The bridge that collapsed in Minneapolis, that could have been paid for with federal money. They could have rebuilt the interstate highway system. There's trillions and trillions of dollars worth of infrastructure that requires repair in this country. And instead, Barack Obama took the stimulus money and dedicated it to his banker friends who are practicing Sharia-compliant banking and his union friends, except for the money that he put in the pockets of fiat to take Chrysler and move it out of the country. What people need to understand is there's not going to be no magic wand. Humpty Dumpty is falling off the wall and nobody's going to put it together again. There used to be a magic wand when we had essential freedom in the nation. That is to say, you could look and say, we're in an economic crisis. How are we going to get out of the crisis? Lower taxes, back off regulation, and let the people thrive. Now we don't have that. We have a complete, total catastrophic collapse of the economy, and we have a socialist government that is not only a socialist government, they are also an ethnic genocidal government. There are genocidalists working in the White House. One person, this woman named Thomason, has written a paper at Harvard that they had to pull away, and you can't even find it anymore, where she was recommending that the population of Earth be reduced to 1.5 billion people. That, of course, means eliminating 5 billion people. And she recommended using nuclear weapons as part of the protocol to get rid of those people. There is, the program that was advanced was advanced by Bertrand Russell in 1951 in the impact of science and society. That was adopted as national policy by Henry Kissinger under the NSSM 200 in 1973 during the Nixon administration. That protocol was to impose abortion and to put as many women in the workplace as they possibly could in, and one-child and one child families in order to restrict the growth of, of the human race because Henry Kissinger somehow is going to control how many people live on Earth. Now, that policy got expanded, and if you want to know why the United States is advancing homosexuality, it is because they want the population decreased, and they believe the more people they can convert to homosexuality, the fewer children there will be. So that's part of the reason they are advancing that agenda. But that's not the only agenda they're advancing. They're also advancing all the protocols they can to starve the American population. This is why they are active here in the state of Washington to try to destroy agricultural land up the Snohomish River and up the Stillaguamish River and other rivers on this side of the Cascades to impose salt water into those regions and to destroy ag land all outside the scope of lawful authority. Violations of the Land Use Planning Act, violation of the Growth Management Act, violation of the Fresh Water Act, the Coastal Management Act, all of that is being bypassed by NGOs that are not lawfully employed not lawfully empowered to destroy ag land in the West. They're destroying ag land in the central heartland. They tried to shut down all the water in, in the San Joaquin Valley two years ago in order to dry that up so that there would be no crops growing. Now, people need to know, the federal government is trying to completely restrict food in order to limit the amount of food that's available so that half the population in this country starves to death. This is who the government is. Now, there's, geno there's one genocidalist after another in that administration. Ezekiel Emanuel wanted to impose the Acteon T4 health care plan. Acteon T4 was a Nazi protocol. The seven doctors responsible for Acteon T4 were convicted for crimes against humanity and executed in 1947. And yet we have this Ezekiel Emanuel offering these protocols to the United States. It's like scorch the earth, only now we're scorching the earth of the United States of America. That's right. Our government is at war with us as a people with the intent of killing half of us. And, and to get even, even more specific, they're at war with uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, the United Nations, Judeo-Christian values and beliefs, you're talking about homosexuality, abortion, 
Uh, all of this is to eradicate Judeo-Christian values and beliefs, the old world order with the new world order agenda. That's what you've been describing. That's correct. And this new world order agenda, this leadership is, they are Babylon. Okay, they have wrapped the nation in the cloak of Babylon. And that cloak of Babylon includes infant sacrifice. One minute. Which is abortion, euthanasia, uh, and homosexuality and other deviant practices, plus pagan, man, mandated pagan worships, worship, uh, worshiping. And they want to destroy the, the true practice of the true faith. Of course they want to do that because the true faith gets in their way. Ultimately, it is ultimately evil. They have no regard whatsoever for the Creator. They have no regard for the atoning grace of Jesus Christ. No regard whatsoever. And those who do cling to that faith are the enemies of the state. And I'm not the one saying that. Janet Napolitano, March 23rd, 2009, issued a uh, memorandum describing Christians as enemy domestic terrorists of the state. So Stephen, 15 seconds, wake up this American Christian church that is just allowing it to happen. Restore the Holy Covenant. That means you cannot sit in your church and say everything's going to be good because I'm going to be raptured out of here before it gets rough. It's already rough. And you're going to see the ultimate destruction of the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. Wake up because everything is coming against the United States of America to move us into a new world order and Christians are the target to be persecuted. The word of God is serious. Can you say amen? amen. You don't play with it? You don't mock it? You don't reject it, you don't manipulate it, you obey it. Do you enjoy my warning television program? If you do, I need your help. Judgment is escalating. The cup of iniquity is becoming full for the United States of America. The science of judgment is sweeping the world. Every nation is being judged. The New World Order, Islam and the 12th Imam, the Mahdi, World War III, the mark of the beast, the plagues of God, over two billion people dying, Armageddon, and the return of Jesus Christ. Please, won't you help me sound the alarm? Partner with me. Even a one-time gift would help. Telephone now, 360-629-5248. That's 360-629-5248. Thank you, and shalom.